Hello and you are very welcome back to Film Result and in today's episode I'm going to teach you three ways of importing your media into DaVinci Resolve with a range of efficiency, practicality and usefulness. This is a totally beginner friendly tutorial which means we're going to be covering really basic but vital stuff in the beginning so do check the notes below there will be timestamps so if you're already comfortable with certain aspects you can of course skip ahead to the sections that you need. If you're new to Film Resolve, YouTube has informed me that I'm contractually obligated to tell you to subscribe and hit the notification bell, as well as like this video, even if you don't actually like it. So with that out of the way, let's jump into it. The first thing we're gonna cover before we jump into the actual techniques is ensuring that everyone watching is able to navigate to the relevant pages. Um, so in this video, we're gonna be bouncing back and forth a little bit between the media and the edit page. So just to make sure everyone can do that, coming down onto the bottom right of, or well, bottom center of your screen, you have all your pages available to you on this panel. And simply all you have to do is click on the page you want. So if we want to go to the edit page, we'll click on that, come back to the media page, we click on that. Two things that might occur is one, the page might be missing from this panel and two, the panel itself might be missing entirely. So let's have a look at how to fix those and then we can move on. Um, so firstly, if a page is missing from the panel. If we come up to the top here and click on workspace and come to show page, all you have to do is just make sure that the page you want is actually enabled. So if I uh, disenable, unenable, disable, there we go, disable the media page and then I just switch out so that it actually triggers it, you can see it's now missing. So just come up to workspace, go to show page, make sure media is enabled and it will reappear in that panel and we can come to it. Secondly, if the panel is missing entirely, come up to workspace and make sure that show page navigation is enabled because if that's disabled, it'll be gone entirely. Now, perhaps you actually want that gone for real estate's sake. Uh, say you're on a laptop and you have a very small screen. You could also come up to workspace and switch page and just switch page within there or use the keyboard shortcuts. So I can use this to go to the edit page, come back and use it to go back to the media page. So you can do that too. Me personally, I leave show page navigation on and I leave all the pages enabled. Now that we're back on the media page, let's have a brief discussion about the user interface. And I'm going to just keep this to what's relevant to this tutorial. So we have the media storage uh, window up here. And if it's not enabled, just click on media storage and that will open it up. And rule of thumb, if it's, you know, a, a panel option or a window option grayed out, it's not visible. And if it's glowing white, it is visible. So that's where it'll live on the top left. And then your media pool down here, this entire panel here is your media pool. And it's important to note that this media pool directly remaps um, to the media pool of the edit tab that will show up on the cut page as well, that will show up in Fusion and Fairlight. So anything that ends up in the media pool here will reflect onto the other pages, shot for shot, folder for folder, and so on. So let's actually jump into technique number one, which is the most basic and rudimentary technique, but it's something that we always fall back on when just dragging something in real quick. And that is just the simple drag and drop and we're doing it from a file explorer window on Windows or a finder window on a Mac. So I'm gonna drag over a window here. And basically this is the last episode I published and all its files and folders and all that. So we're in Film Resolve episode 103, editing options, which it ended up being the seven edit commands of uh, DaVinci Resolve is what it ended up being called. So I've got all my folders and say, if we come into video, I have piece the camera and I have my screen record and so on. So I have all my media here that I'm wanting to import. Um, so basically all we have to do is go to any file we want to bring in and just do a simple drag and drop. And that's all there is to that. Um, a few extra little details is you can right click over here and start adding bins. So we'll call that video 
and we'll call that audio. And then we can come into video, come back to our window, drag that in there. And now it's organized into a folder for us. So you can drag that straight into a folder if you've already got that created. And if I remove that and remove our folders, and I bring in that video clip, I'll bring in our screen record video clips, and let's bring in our song. If you've just dragged and dropped a load of media in, then you want to go about organizing. You can then add your bins afterwards, come back out to master, and then you can drop the relevant um, clips into their relevant folders. And just note that there is actually a glitch with my screen recorder. And for some reason, the original file um, resolves recognizing it as a audio file and not a video file. So I had to convert it and then re-import it. That's why this video clip has ended up in the video folder. But anyway, that's not really important. One last thing before we move on from just the straight up drag and drop from a kind of a computer window as opposed to something within Resolve is if we are in the edit tab. So I'm just going to add a timeline and call that waffles. And you can, of course, drag and drop a clip directly onto the timeline and that will import. But it's important to note that it'll import into the last selected folder. So for example, let's get rid of that and get rid of it from there as well. Let's have a video and an audio folder. And say we were last working within the video folder and that's what was last selected. And I'm now dragging in my song and I add that there. Well, that audio track will automatically be mapped to the video folder because that's what was last selected. So just be cautious of that if you're looking to be ultra organized that you'll have to you know, move that manually into the correct folder if you weren't selected onto the correct folder. And just coming back to the media tab, see how that all kind of ripples back to the media tab. It's all connected. So that media pool is the same media pool just on different pages as we've already covered. So next up is technique number two, which is has a lot of crossover. Um, and basically the key difference is we're doing this all within Resolve and we're now ignoring any external windows. So we're coming back up to our media storage and I've already navigated to my relevant folder. Uh, obviously you just go doing what you need to do to find the footage wherever it is on your hard drives. And from here, we basically have the exact same thing. I can come into video and into my folders and I can drag and drop, or I can come into a clip and right click and add into media pool. And of course you can shift click or control click on multiple clips. However, you need to gather the clips you want to drag in and you can drag and drop or right click and add to media pool. And you get some other advantages in here, such as all these other options, should you need them. And of course, a lot of things from the previous technique apply, such as making sure you are um, selected on the right bin and um, to make sure it goes into the correct bin. So for arguments sake, coming back into master and getting rid of what we've already imported. If I am on my video bin, but I am selecting my audio and add to media pool, that's going to go to the wrong folder. So just being cautious of the fact that if you have bins added, making sure you're clicked on the right bin, or of course you could, if I unimport that, come into master and start bringing in everything you need real quick. And then you can start breaking those out, audio into audio and then video into video. So just keeping in mind that relationship of what folder you're selected on is where things will land unless you're dragging them directly. So for example, I could be on my video, but if I come in, I'm just gonna delete those to make sure it doesn't bounce back. So if I'm on my video folder, but I come into audio to import an audio track, I could drag it directly onto that folder, in which case it'll still go into the correct one. Just worth keeping in mind. So for the last technique, I'm going to move on to my personal favorite way of going about this, which is the what I would consider the organized way. 
So I'm just going to bring back over this window and you can see already that I'm quite an organized editor personally. And I have assets where they belong. I have my audio where it belongs and I have my video where it belongs. And th this could get, depending on the project, very complicated. It could be an A, B, a C and a D cam. And within those cameras, there could be A001, A002. There could be folders and folders and folders. So if I'm going to go importing, you know, by dragging and dropping, I'm going to have to reorganize all that. So how can we get Resolve to do the work for us? Well, it's very simple. Navigate to the same folder like you have done before. And here I'm going to go and click assets because I do want to bring that in. I'm going to control click or command click on a Mac audio renders. I won't need because that's a hindsight thing as is saves and I'm going to click video. So I'm going to select those three folders or as many as you need. Then we're going to go right click and we're going to come down to the third option. Add folder and subfolders into media pool bracket create bins and that's the important part create bins. So I'm going to select that and as you can see that has imported the media in the same way in terms of folder structure that I have within my hard drives. So it's already organized for me, even down to those subfolders within video. So again, if I had four cameras, A, B, C, D cam, and multiple cards of media within that, so A001, A002, B001, all those folders we remapped. And that again, translates across the media pool, across all of Resolve, and it keeps things super organized and look if more media comes in down the line that's fine come into video right click add bin a006 just came in and you can import that additional footage into that folder but you've gotten the guts of your work done and a really solid start so that's my kind of three main techniques that I use going about importing my media into DaVinci Resolve and I hope you found them useful. I'd like to just recommend a video onto you really quick because odds are if you're looking at this, you've just started your DaVinci Resolve journey. So I would recommend checking out this video here, which is the seven edit commands of DaVinci Resolve, which will get you a really good running start at how to edit in DaVinci Resolve and then you could graduate onto the next video after that which would be editing with in and out points and when you combine those two you can edit a lightning fast so if you enjoyed this video do check those out and like I said before and um, YouTube says you have to subscribe and hit the notification bell and whether you liked it or not hit that like button really appreciate it thanks very much and I will see you in the next video